today we are going to be discussing the topic of how we can create gender inclusive schools and i don't think i could have anyone better uh, than my guest on today's session today i am being joined by ms dolly baja uh, she is the principal at the aga khan school in chitrawad she has been a school educator since the year 1998 uh, since 2009 she's been leading this great institution that is part of the aga khan trust this particular school led by ma'am has been continuously ranked for two consecutive years as the number one school in the region by the education world this has, this uh, school has also received a special award for the contribution in the area of environment and ecology preservation the school caters to 25 villages and more number of villages and towns in that particular belt and ma'am has a great diversity in terms of the students that are coming to study and who are you know a, a part of this great institution thank you so much dolly ma'am for taking out the time and being with us this evening thank you so much pratika thank you so much and it was a pleasure i still remember the moment you gave me a call and uh, you said we want to discuss and i was like okay i mean there is a platform to discuss about it there are few things you know we always uh, get bothered with there are so many things we want to let people know the parents know students know teachers know but not every time we get the right platform to talk about it so thank you so much for this opportunity and thanks for it, uh, thanks to your organization as well so uh, you know uh, i uh, head the school in gujarat and that is southern part of gujarat uh, so yes in gujarat the schools are separated by genders if you ask specifically but in india uh, there are metro cities you know uh, where there are coed schools uh, even in gujarat there are coed schools but these are basically private schools but uh, in metro cities uh, even could be government schools to our coed schools but if you consider my region then they are uh, basically gender based schools so uh, in primary there is co education but as soon as the child reaches in grade 9 uh, what we call is higher high high school and then higher secondary yes they are uh, you know uh, gender based school but then once again in college they are again co ed colleges so it differs from place to place but i just always have a worry that how many are the metro cities in india you know basically there are either the villages or the towns so and people do prefer those those who cannot afford private schools they do prefer that their either children are going to government schools and that those are girl school or boy school sometimes there is also possibility that since there are no availability they send their schools uh, children to the specific specific gender schools so it's both the ways either the schools are not available or sometimes parents don't prefer so in any case uh, children are supposed to study in specific gender schools so uh, i really wonder because uh, i uh, guess all the uh, participants today attendees today are from education so they would all agree with me and uh this there will be common thoughts uh, they'll they'll think the same as me now but if you consider uh, the first issue will be uh, the gender discrimination in education which exists uh, with the differential treatment with the students and that has been received by a male teacher or a female teacher as well a male teacher will uh, treat the children differently female teacher will treat the teacher uh, children differently teachers expectations more for example from girl students that they do well in arts music languages just a small instance like if there is any program going on some performances are to be done then what we, what the teacher a teacher is given a task what the teacher will go and see they'll just go to the classroom and figure out are there any girls you know because they feel that they'll be better in performing arts Uh, and uh, sometimes yes uh, if it's uh, any sports competition or even to uh, bring good grades in maths and science then we feel that boys will do better and uh, you know uh, other issue what i face uh, when there are projects given 
because I uh, our school is in rural setup and uh, I I have been working in a town as well and there also was the same issue that when we have to select the students for the project, we have to be mindful that we are selecting boys. Why? Because the parents may not prefer their girls to go out for any kind of a project. Or even uh, sometimes parents may not want the girls to buy all those materials to be prepared for the projects. So these are uh, some of the things uh, which we observe. At the same time, uh, one more uh, issue which we identify is that uh, when you are in the classroom, you know, the girls are hesitant to seek uh, permission to go to use washroom. And uh, but it's, you know, sometimes. Even the boys are uh, upset about this, that they are treated not fairly in comparison to girls and the boys come and complain as ma'am, uh, this teacher is punishing to boys more but they don't say anything to the girls. So it's not that it's always it's for girls, but sometimes even we need to be mindful. How are we treating boys? So these are some of the issues we face uh, in the school related to genders. So, uh, you know, uh, you rightly said uh, this, uh, if there is any electronic work, we call the uh, boys and for any other work, girls. But this pandemic taught us very good thing. I know so many instances, the boys got stuck up at home during the lockdown. And then I wonder that uh, was the boy able to have his own food? You know, right. so uh, uh, in our preschool, we have home areas and all. And I remember uh, one of our teacher was teaching uh, how to make roti dough and then uh, how to make rotis. And then there was a boy, you know, he said, I am a boy. I cannot make rotis. And there was also a boy. He said, why we need to learn to make rotis? So uh, you have two things here. And this answers to your question, you know. Uh, there is a set of uh, parents who un who teach their children that boys also need to learn. And I tell you this pandemic, after this pandemic, everybody agrees we need to know whether it's male or female. You need to know how to cook because your maids may have stopped coming to your home. Right. Uh, if you have been working right. somewhere else, then uh, you were totally on your own even cleaning and cooking and everything you needed to do on your own. So at that point of time, uh, you need to have a setup in which your uh, teachers are teaching the children that no activity is should be gender biased. At the same time, ensure that our parents know that we advocate gender equality in our school at the point of time when you give them admissions. It, it's a thumb rule. I, I strongly believe with that, that when you give them the admission, when you have your parent orientation program, make it very clear that we advocate gender equality. And other than that, you catch up performances. See, you have your annual concerts, you have exhibitions. These are the platforms where you can show what is a gender equality. Um, I'm a very proud of my school uh, where uh, it's a very, very, very smaller area. But when it's an annual concert, we get people in thousands and we show each and every part of the society. Uh, we just show them the reflection, what happens in the society and people do get overwhelmed. We have shown uh, female molestation and how the female can fight for one thing. And we show the dramas where how the, the daughter and the son should be treated. So and every year we do the same. Uh, I remember there was one exhibition and uh, our students wanted to do something totally different. They used entire uh, hall of the school in, and they gave the name. They themselves gave the name and it was pink. But what did they do in that? They, uh, they got all the data of the uh, harassments of the children because ours is a school so we need to look at uh, we are uh, mainly focusing on these this age group so uh, all the data how it is happening how the child has been harassed who is harassing what is the percentage for the girl child what is the percentage we i mean and these were our children the students from our high school 
and i tell you what kritika the best part was these boys were wearing pink t-shirts yeah yeah and and we had we had nearly 2500 people coming to see this and they explained that it's not that the girl only the girl is being harassed even the boys are harassed who is harassing them so many posters the it, it through artwork through paintings they used puppetry and everything and they had feedback forms they had all the working and non working models showing them so these are the platforms where you can sensitize not only the parents but also the society uh, you know you can also have use these uh, things in your magazines and uh, social media but very important one of our colleague principal once just recently when we were discussing she said dolly it's always kyc that is know your child you know now kyc know your child if you need you need to know if your child is facing issue at home you need to sensitize the parent individually so it's all the ways so uh, it's all the ways that uh, either you address them over a huge platform but if you know your child you need to know and maybe you have to address this individually